Okay, so hello. Uh, small catastrophe averted. Uh, my name is Chris Kuhn. I speak uh, only English, so I try to speak slow. If I start to speak fast, you can throw things at me. I'll slow down. Uh, so let's see if this works. Okay, good. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, a different way to do some rigging. If you are not, this right I have right here is using constraints only. Okay, so if you have organic models, this will not work at all. But if you have just, uh, all right. So for mechanical ones, it uh, it works good. Although, how do I? No. Moment. No, no input. Emulate the three button mouse. Okay. Okay, good. So here's the actual rig uh, that goes with this. There's a lot of stuff here. And I would like to show you uh, uh, how you would use this, first of all. So these are just uh, objects here, these controllers. So like on the back, you have uh, the pitch. And this is locked on all axes except for the Z, the Z. So you drag this, and the pitch will come up and down on the aircraft, like that. All right, and then the roll come here onto the ailerons on the wingtips, you see? OK. And then the yaw, very simple, oops, is just uh, there on the back, OK? And then we come to the back. Uh, this is the, the nozzle for the back, the blades. You just take this, and this will uh, allow you to come in and out like that. So you adjust the pitch of those. All right, and then you come forward. You have some more. The speed brake to slow down the aircraft. They just pop up from there. Very simple. All right, uh, the missile down here is just very easy. But with a missile, you know, on an airplane in real life, it will not just shoot uh, straight ahead. So first, it will come down a little, and then the motor will kick on, and then it goes forward like that. So like that. Um, and then the two big ones, I have uh, the VTOL controller here. This is for the aircraft to land vertically, so you pull this down, a lot of things happen. All right, like that. Uh, so you see the actual engine will rotate down, and then the doors will come open, like so. And then on top you have uh, the lift fan right here that will uh, push air down to balance it out so the aircraft does not, you know, flip and crash, so that's good. Uh, I have some more hatches up here. I have no idea uh, what these are for, but I looked at uh, the F-35 in real life, and it has those, so I put them on. I'm sure it's good. All right, and then out on the wingtips as well, you can see you have a couple more that come up and down there, uh, right here, and this is to balance the aircraft uh, from side to side, so for rocking. All right, that is the one big one I have there. And then uh, let me flip this over. I'll go to my, uh, my landing gear right here. And you can see with the landing gear, we have those as well. They will come out like this. All right, so the front one is very simple. It comes down directly. The back, they roll in kind of on three axis like this. Uh, and they, you'll notice an important thing about this is they don't all happen at the same time. You see like this one in the front, it is done, but then these ones here, they, they finish later. So uh, that is uh, one example here. And uh, we'll just go over how to do this really fast. It, it's not really very difficult to do it this way. OK, so something very simple first. Uh, most of you probably already know this, but it does not take very long. So you have something like, like this. This should be one object, actually, Control J. Um, you rotate this, it rotates correctly by default, it's a circle, right? Yes, so, when you, whereas you have something like this needle here on this gauge, you rotate it, that's not good. So if, to fix this, uh, and this is important for all the rigging, right? So you would pick the face or the vertex or whatever it is, you do shift S, cursor to selection, right? Tab out, and then you do origin to 3D cursor, and now it rotates correctly in case you have to change that. OK. So the first one uh, is very simple. And this is just a uh, lock track constraint. 
uh, if you've used it already, I apologize, but uh, all you have here on this arrow, and this is under constraints, you would just add constraint, and you would go to uh, lock track right here. Okay, so the arrow, uh, it points to this, and it follows this around the screen, but only on the one axis, see? So you go up and down, and it tracks it, but you go this way, it does not track it. Okay, and this is very important, because most of our parts will work that way, right? So to figure out how to lock it, you see that uh, the axis here is the y-axis, so that is the axis to lock, and the x-axis points this way, and so we want to go away from the arrow, so you are on negative x. All right, so what I will do here is I will do Shift S, cursor to selection, and I will take this, and I'll go up here, and the thing about or lock track is it is always on local axis, see? So we go to look at local, and it will become clear in a second. So I'll take this, and I will go down to 3D cursor from my pivot point, and we'll just rotate 180. We'll take these, duplicate again, rotate 90, take these again, and rotate 45, okay. So now you can see the local axis for all of them is slightly different, which is good, because you could take this now and you come up like this. All right, so that is how you would do the first part right here in the front, with just the, uh, the nozzle right here, that's how you do this. <coughs> but we move on to the next part here, so Again, with the lock track, uh, these are to take the place of empties. I was not sure how big of a screen I would have, so uh, apparently very big. Uh, this is, we'll just track these back and forth though, so let me go back so I don't confuse myself here. All right, so you can see this has a lock track just like before, and I just made this object to simulate an empty, and it will track this back and forth, right? Okay. So when you have these tail fins, you'll notice uh, with this aircraft and with a lot of aircraft, they don't pivot exactly on the Z axis, right? It's a little bit offset from the Z where you want it to pivot. So an easy way to fix this, right? You just take this, we'll go from that one, three view, and we're just going to move this uh, to line up here. And then what I will do is take this uh, simulated empty here and we'll rotate that like so to match that, okay, and you take the tail fin, and then you take the empty, and you go control P, make parent, okay. And now you take this back here, and the tail fin will move correctly, even though it is not on the Z axis. Okay, and of course, you do the same thing here. Had another one for the wingtip. Okay. Oops, just like that. And you could uh, mess with this uh, to get it perfect. You could pick like two vertexes, cursor to selection, and then object to cursor, and so on to line it up perfectly, but we won't do that. So again, like that. And you could rotate it on all three axes. This is a very easy way to do it, like, like so. So, okay. So the next thing to show you is this is again with lock track constraint. Uh, you have this is your piston base right here, okay, and it is, uh, has the lock track constraint here to piston target. Piston target is this empty right here. So wherever this goes, only on the one axis though, it will follow it around, yes? Okay. And then also, this here is the piston extension that comes out of the piston, a similar thing. So whenever I grab this and move this around, it will follow that. So they are pointing at each other. All right, so then I just took this extension and I parented it to this, uh, this blade right here so that when I rotate this, okay, the other will follow behind it, very simple, for the piston to come out. All right, so this is a, a good use of two lock track constraints, but then we'll take uh, one step further, and on this we have a transformation constraint now here. So what I've done is for the target, I put piston control, piston control is down here, and the location is the input of this arrow, and then I'm going to put it, map it to rotation of this blade on the x-axis. So when I move this forward, uh, this will come forward like this. Uh, and for this case, it seems very simple. You could just rotate this, but if you had a large uh, complex object, uh, it becomes less simple. So uh, this is a good technique to use here. 
And to set up the, the transformation again, for this case with rotate, is very simple. You pick your target, you hit to, from the location to the rotation, and this input here, this is a uh, important. So you would pick this, you hit your end key, it'll bring up the location right here. And so you can say, okay, I want it to start here. And then so I take that value and I plug it into uh, to here and where do I want it to stop? And then this will be from uh, zero degrees to negative 60 degrees just for that, right? So beyond that, uh, it does not do anything. All right, so the next thing you do is you take like this, and all of these use the same, so they all have transformation constraints, yeah, on them. And so when you take this one, it controls all of these together, see, like that. So that is uh, one way that you do that. And then the next thing you can do, which is uh, fairly simple too, is I did the same thing here, but you see they're a little bit offset, so let's show you first. Instead of all at once, they come in sequence like this. And this is a, a good way to rig like a complex process. You could do a car turning into a robot or anything like that with just, and all you would have to do for the animation is you keyframe this arrow right here, and then you're good. So how you do this, these transformation constraints, they are all almost the same, but you can see here, this is uh, from negative 12 to negative 11, from negative 11 to negative 10, and so on and so forth as you go around. And then the arrow, as it crosses the, uh, the right point, each one will come down, like so. Okay. So then for the last one, I have the monkey control here. All right, good. So this is just to demonstrate uh, a couple of things. Uh, I move this forward, the monkey opens, up comes the monkey, monkey turns around, okay. Monkey spins back, monkey goes back down, monkey closes. All right, so uh, it's very simple because you have, this is actually, this monkey is two monkeys, each half of the monkey, right? So again, you just map the location of the uh, controller here and you map it to the rotation down here on transformation. Very simple. So then on this monkey up here, you have two different transformation constraints in sequence. So when the arrow, when the control right here is between negative 10 and negative 8, it's mapping to location. You can see location to location. So this is when the monkey moves up and down. All right, and then you go a little bit more, and then you are now mapping to rotation. So once it gets to a certain point, it automatically switches to control the rotation of the monkey instead of the location. All right, so with all of that there, I can go back here and I will show you uh, all of this, again, yeah, fairly simple. So this, first of all, this uh, the missile launch, you don't even need this, honestly. I just parented it because it looks cool. You can get rid of it. It's fine. You just take this and uh, drag it forward, you see? And it, all I did with this is I just uh, put a constraint on there. Yeah, clamp to missile path, path. Right, so it follows the path, easy. All right. but. Uh, the pitch, first of all, is very simple. You can see I did the same thing I was showing you. Uh, I have empties here to here, so it follows that, right? Easy, but then I just took uh, all of those empties and I parent them to this right here. So they just move the target up and down like so. Okay, that is easy. Um, the roll is a little different for this uh, because what I did is these, they, since they have to go the opposite direction, uh, they still work like this. But what I did is I parented both of those controls uh, to the circle here in the middle, which, again, strictly speaking, is not necessary, but it looked cool. So with this circle now, uh, when you do the roll, the circle has a transformation constraint here to roll controller, which is this. So when you use this and switch the location, it will spin this on the rotation here. So that is wrong. Okay. So it's hard to see, uh, but this will rotate when you move this back and forth. And of course, because it rotates, it moves those wing flaps up and down, which is how the, the aircraft will spin around uh, on, in this case, the, uh, the Z axis. I'm not sure how I screwed up this uh, orientation here. But, and then the one in the back, uh, obviously very simple. I don't even have any other empties. It's just this right here has a lock track to the yaw controller, which is up here. 
And so it just does that directly. Very simple. And uh, I already showed you um, this right here. Just comes in and out. And I had a good setup here on this, like right there. We just had lock track with those. I actually did not do it that way. But that's only because I was an idiot. I uh, should have done it that way. Uh, but I made it a more complicated way where I had them track to something and then I had uh, something in the middle with a scale that adjusted with the location. It was very not necessary. So, all right. Then we'll do the, uh, the VTOL controllers. You can see for everything that is uh, involved with the VTOL, which is a lot, a lot of things, uh, but they all work uh, very simply, very much the same. So, for example, this engine right here. Uh, the engine here is parented to uh, this circle. And this circle is more necessary, see, because what I wanted to make sure is when I did this, like say you were halfway down, I still wanted to make sure you could come to this, okay, and it would, it would still work correctly, even if it was not at an exact angle somewhere. And so you see for this, I have limit location on here, so you hit the G key for grab, it will only move uh, in such a way that this will work correctly. All right. So that's for that. And then you can see these, uh, these panels right here. Maybe you can see. Oh, OK. So I forget. The panel is uh, parented to this empty right here. And again, because it's not on an exact axis, I had to line up this empty here with the <laughs> axis I wanted it to rotate on. And then I just uh, parented this panel directly to that empty right there and to the VTOL controller. So you can see based on this, this is the controller, is on the z-axis here. Okay, so as this moves down to various points, you can see the door right there, the first door opens first, and then the engine starts, comes down like that. So all of these doors, so there and there and there, it takes a little bit of time to do, but uh, it's very simple, uh, the actual technique for that. Okay, so then, let's see, what else do I have? That's really uh, mostly it for the VTOL controller. For the landing gear, which was the last one that I had, where did it go? Okay, so gear up and down. We'll start with the front one. That is very simple. Oh, and then something I did not show you also. So once the gear is down, I have this uh, gear steering here, and it will just uh, track to that, so you can steer around. But to control the... Uh, there it went the gear as it comes down. Okay, so for the front one, the panels are the same. They just use the transformation constraint with the arrow. And then all I have here is a, a lock track for this uh, to this empty. So this part right here rotates on the x-axis to move the wheel down. Uh, and it has this empty parented to it. And then this bar just tracks to that. So really, uh, there is some more junk in here, but you can't see it usually. Uh, and it's not rigged, so it's no big deal. Then in the back you have uh, up here. So in the back you have this uh, different. All right, like this. They rotate on three axes. So this right here is a. Uh, well, first of all, this is not very accurate down here, so do not look too close at the pivot. Uh, but it rotates on three axes, and you can see here that I did, uh, yeah, I did that. And so I just specified exactly how much I wanted it to rotate. Uh, and if these numbers look very precise, it's because all I did was I picked something that I thought was close, and then I tried it out. Uh, so here, I'll show you. For example, let's say maybe I think uh, 120 will be correct as a guess. But now I do my gear up and down, and well, that's not a good example because it still works. <laughs> uh, let's say uh, maybe I think 20. Yeah, OK. So that works. But now I have my gear come out, and I say, oh, no, that's not correct. So because look at the, this. This would cause a very bad uh, incident on the runway. All right. So you take this now, and you say, OK, how do I adjust it? Oops. You can adjust this up here where the start point is to get it how you want the start point to be. And then when you leave it, you come back again, uh, and it will work how it should. Okay, so that's how you set a lot of those numbers. 
And of course you can play with the, the sequencing and stuff like that. Uh, and I didn't do this here, but if you wanted to, you could even, if you had a particular sequence that you wanted to animate, but say you didn't know when in the animation you wanted it to be, you could take one big arrow and uh, you could have everything. You could have it fly up to the thing, VTOL come down, landing gear, missiles, whatever. And you just animate keyframe the one arrow and the whole plane would work whenever you needed it to work. So again, there's limitations to this, and I'm sure you guys, if you deal with poses and other things like that, you will start to see, okay, maybe I cannot use this so well, but uh, there are a lot of applications where it, uh, it saves a lot of time. So uh, that's my presentation. All right, oh, uh, one more thing. I do have uh, this blend file here on CD. Uh, this is my wife uh, back there in the row. If, if anybody would like a copy of, uh, of this file, so. All right, is there uh, any questions? Powiem po polsku, czy jak chcesz przemieszczać cały obiekt, cały samolot, czy o czym musisz pamiętać, żeby ci ten rig się nie popsuł? When you try to move the whole plane, what do you try to remember not to mess it up? Ah, yeah, okay, good, good, very good question. So, there's an order to do this rigging in. This is my empty here, right, for the whole plane. So you could take the whole plane, uh, move it, rotate it like that to around the scene. But the thing is, you must do the parenting first. So for example, uh, this is the body of the plane that is parented to this, and you must parent it before you start the rigging. Otherwise, you will do the rigging, and then uh, you will fly the plane away. The landing gear will still be on the runway, you know, like that. Uh, You are probably aware, you are probably uh, aware that there will be problem uh, while animating because probably you cannot uh, reset all uh, all the controllers their position. So maybe a nice fix uh, or add-on for this rig will be uh, to parent every control to an uh, armature so it contains all the animation in one place and you could uh, reset the position of the sure. controllers. Uh, you, you could easily, although like I say, uh, for each of these controls, like the gear up down, I have a limit location once I have it worked out. So this will not go uh, any higher on the Z yeah, axis. But if you, you do uh, uh, Alt uh, uh, G, what would happen? If you did what? Alt G. If you rested the position. Uh, oh, nothing, nothing. Because there is there, no actual rig here uh, or rig uh, down here. I say rig only because I don't want to say I have constrained the model. You know what I mean? Uh, th there's really just, it's just a word problem more than anything else. Because uh, I don't have a better term for it. And, and like I said, there's many, many situations where this would not work for you at all uh, and you would not be able to do it. But uh, for sometimes uh, animations, it's, it's a good quick fix, so. All right, any other? Nope, okay, thank you.